a very good afternoon to all my students, esteemed faculties and dignitaries present here. Education is an organic, complex and unified system in which all the factors involved in the educational ecosystem are organically linked, which in turn shows consistency and contradiction, balance and imbalance dynamically. It is a concept that promotes education development from the view of global outlook, sense of worth, communication, balance and dynamic perspective to investigate education related problems and carry on education research both theoretically and practically. Today, we are extremely honored and proud to have with us Professor Dr. Shopun Bhattacharya, an eminent academician of our country, who will enlighten us today with his deliberation on necessity for development of appropriate ecosystem for realizing inherent potential of National Technical Education 2022 system. Once again, we are extremely honored to have him with us today. And may I now request the August gathering to kindly welcome him with a standing ovation on behalf of Dr. B.C. Roy Engineering College, Durbapur. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. May I now have the honor of requesting Professor Dr. Shokun Bhattacharya, Chief Guest of our program today, along with Dr. Shotajit Ghos, President BCRC, Sri Torun Bhattacharya, General Secretary BCRC, and Vice Principal BCRC, Professor Dr. K. M. Hussain, to please grace the days with their kind presence. ceremonial lamp and to do the honors, may I now invite our honorable dignitaries present on the days to please proceed towards the Dia stand and mark the beginning of this auspicious journey. May I also request our student volunteers to kindly help our dignitaries with the proceedings. It is a great moment for all of us to have an eminent scientist like Professor Dr. Shopun Bhattacharya here with us today, whose contributions and scientific acumen in the field of science and technology remains unparalleled. Today, we on behalf of BCRC Collective would like to felicitate Dr. Bhattacharya and to do the honours, we are request our Honourable General Secretary Sir, Sri Torun Bhattacharya to kindly felicitate Dr. Shopun Bhattacharya with Uttoriya.
Professor. May I also request Professor Dr. K. M. Hussain, Honorable Vice Principal of BCMC, to kindly greet Dr. Bhattacharya with memento also. At times, life's priorities become so dominant and urgent that it poses impediment to our intellectual desires. Our Honorable Principal Sir, Professor Dr. Sanjay S. Power, in spite of his keen longing to welcome Dr. Bhattacharya in person, had to leave for Mumbai for some very urgent call. His void is really being friend today. But still we are fortunate enough to connect with him virtually. And may I now request Professor Dr. Sanjay S. Power, Honorable Principal BCRC, to kindly render his welcome address. Uh, uh, education Minister Professor Swapan Bhattacharya, Head of the Departments, uh, dear faculty members and students, we really are honored to host uh, Professor Swapan Bhattacharya uh, on this occasion at the stage where we are planning to grow in a certain manner. Uh, we are at the stage where we have planned uh, with these activities you know, from the progress point of view, whether it is uh, such activities, uh, industrial relations activities, the development of an institution, uh, in which case the stakeholders, all the stakeholders, either the management is there, our principal is there, faculty members are there, students are there, even our teaching people are there. It's uh, a very important role of each and every person in these activities. And uh, for this purpose, for our guidance, uh, we have Professor Sopan Bhattacharya with us. Uh, I will apologize first of all to Professor Sopan Bhattacharya because uh, due to my prior commitment, I am not present there to personally post, sir. Uh, but I am sure my other team members uh, will be taking care of all the, the requirements of the formalities and so on. Uh, it's really a great honor for all of us, sir, and then uh, your guidance. Uh, to all of us uh, in terms of our various activities uh, for our future. Uh, it's, uh, we are looking forward for you, uh, for your guidance. Uh, as uh, I have already said, we have a lot of aims. The aims in terms of uh, internationalization, the aim in terms of uh, having the very best possible students, uh, uh, not only from the West Bank, but from the India also. Uh, the aim from uh, developing the professional and commercial activities in the institutions, which may be a unique uh, version. Uh, and of course, uh, excelling in the areas uh, where uh, the national and international uh, requirements are there, uh, specifically the demand from the national point of view, defense point of view. And uh, for this purpose, uh, we really require your guidance and I am sure uh, your experience, uh, expertise. Uh, since uh, the long term from the technology previously you had been working until today, will really help us a lot in your guidance as well. I am sure uh, your talk will inspire all of us here uh, to the students as well as faculties as well as the management and the teaching faculty members to work forward for the excellence and so on. Thank you. Thank you sir for the valuable speech. May I now have the honor and privilege of introducing our chief guest and keynote speaker of today's seminar, Professor Dr. Shopan Bhattacharya. Professor Bhattacharya is an ever shining star in the sky of knowledge. Dr. Bhattacharya was a professor of computer science and engineering at the Jadavpur University. He was the first director of NIT Durgapur, former director of NIT Suratkal, Karnataka, former director of IIIT Kulani. He had earned several highest positions in several institutes like IIM Choka, National Institute of Technical Teachers Training and Research, Salt Lake, Kolkata, University of Calcutta and IIT Mumbai. He was a senior research associate of National Research Council USA and working at Naval Postgraduate School Monterey CA as coordinator of their PhD program in software engineering. He was a visiting professor at Adelin University, Turkey, visiting professor at the Asian Institute of Technology, Bangkok, Thailand, visiting researcher at Michigan State University, East Lansing, USA, and visiting researcher at the University of Newcastle, UK. 
Professor Shatam Bhattacharya is a prolific speaker and an exponent in the field of computer science and engineering and a member of the Apex Committee NBA2. We are extremely honored and fortunate that he has agreed to be with us today and present his thoughts on necessity for development of appropriate ecosystem for realizing inherent potential of National Technical Education 2022 system. Ladies and gentlemen, may I now have the honor of requesting Dr. Bhattacharya to kindly deliver his keynote address. So please. One small correction, I was with IIIT Calcutta, not Kolyani. Uh, okay, Namaskar and very good afternoon to you all. Respected dignitaries on the DAS, in front of the DAS, friends, faculty members, and of course the students. Uh, it's a huge pleasure for me to be back in the premises of BC Royal College after maybe about 12 years. I have a huge emotional connect with the city of Durgapur. During my school days, dating back maybe 50 years, every winter we used to come to Durgapur stay with my relatives in Ashok Avenue, Harshavardhan, Ram Krishna Avenue, Newton, all of the places. Basic motivation was to enjoy the ambience of Durgapu. So many uh, to watch this drama, theatres, I still remember Utpal doctors, uh, this barricade and Tinet all over. I, Seen here, Misty Doi from Lal Doi from Loving Sweets, uh, cinema in Onuradha, if I remember correctly. The Chitralai also came up. So people try to connect me with REC, but that's only in the passing. I have a huge, huge uh, uh, emotional connect with Durgapur. Almost every weekend. We used to go to Netaji Bhavan, Rabindra Bhavan, all kinds of uh, uh, musical evenings and still I remember uh, and then the sitting uh, 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 on the roadside just see fleet of 20-25 buses uh, uh, ferrying all those you know DSP, ASP stuff. What is most important the kind of pride I used to see the people in Durgapur. They used to feel proud to say that I am from Durgapur. Just like uh, it happens, you know. I am an alumni of Presidency College. So if you ask me where did you study, I would say Presidency College. Even though the degree was from Calcutta University, I would say I am from Presidency College. Similarly, uh, if somebody from Bengal, uh, Bangladesh, you ask where are you from? If he is from Dhaka, he will say, I am from Bikrampur. May not say Dhaka. So similarly, I used to easily feel that pride that if you ask somebody where are you from, she would say, I am from Durgapur, not West Bengal. So this is the kind of pride people of Durgapur used to have. I don't know the present scenario, but what I firmly believe that come what may, Bengal is known for its culture and academics. And Bengal cannot sustain the legacy of its culture and academics unless Durgapur takes the lead. 
just like I was with IIT Bombay also. Maharashtra, yes, Mumbai is there. But culture and capital is only one or two institutes may be very good in some places. But to take the leadership, entire ambience has to be for the entire city. And Durgapur, I do believe that without Durgapur, Bengal cannot go ahead. And without Bengal, India cannot go ahead. At least in culture and academics. Other domains, I will not uh, comment upon. So, during my tenure with NIT Durgapur, I had the opportunity to come here. Uh, I, of course, I enjoyed those times. But then, you know, when you come in a, on an official capacity, you have all kinds of, uh, you know, boundary conditions as well. So today, uh, I can easily say, take that, of course, the students and most of the faculty members also, and if the parents, they are also like my students. So I can talk as if I am addressing to my students, so that I can take the liberty of talking straight from my heart without being bothered about what are the implications afterwards. So that gives me that confidence and that liberty. So I want to put this as a disclaimer so that nobody misunderstands me afterwards. And as an anecdote, when I passed from Hindu school in Calcutta in 73, some of our friends had joined IIT Kharagpur and long back, okay, uh, electronics department, then computer science was not there. My school teachers were just mad with me, saying, why are you going to ruin your career? Engineering is for mediocres. Engineering is for mediocres. Come to physics or economics, presidency college or St. Stephen's College, Delhi. So in mass, we left, at least I remember 10, 12 of them. Uh, so the Kharagpur and joined presidency, some of them joined Calcutta Medical College also. So it's important to put this disclaimer because the way I will talk afterwards that officially I, I say that I am an IIT dropout uh, even before uh, taking a single class. Now, next, uh, before I get into my topic proper, another small story I would share with you uh, about five years back when as we all do, we were traveling uh, in California, that's because I was there for three, four years, uh, traveling to Golden Gate, uh, San Francisco, and with some of my colleagues from NIT Suratka, and suddenly a fleet of 10, 12 students met me there, coming from all over the NITs, because then I was in NIT Suratka and reasonably well known to the and for those who are aware with my modus operandi uh, that uh, I love uh, meeting the students 24 by 7 so they just sir okay mera paas aaya and the others and some of them were not from Durgapur or Suratka from other places they were just surprised how come they know me because uh, I, I, these kind of talks I have to give some other places. I still remember two of them. They say, Sir, it is because of you that we are here today. I said, what, what I did? They say that, 
So we joined the BTEC program in some NIT with the objective that after four years we will get a job and of course we get a job in TCS, Infosys, wherever. We heard you talk when we were in second year and we do not know what happened after that. Next couple of years we have decided no, 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 no. We have to go for masters and PhD from one of the top 100 universities of the world. And our entire thought process got changed. And uh, that's why we are here today. We are, we are now we are pursuing our masters and just came here to visit uh, San Francisco Golden Gate. Why I am saying this? Because I do sincerely expect and believe that maybe three, four years, five years down the line, I keep on visiting uh, US very frequently and UK also. I will meet some of you who are present today doing their research there and enjoying the beautiful lawn of Stanford University. Even if two of you I can meet there and you feel from your heart that it is because of today's talk which has changed you to think in that line. I would consider that as my success. So this is the background. Now let's get to the point. All of you must be following cricket. Yes. So who is the most successful cricket captain in last 10 years? MS Dhoni probably. Before that, Virat uh, uh, Kohli is a great batsman. I'm not sure whether he's a great captain or not. MS Dhoni, everybody will agree at least. Where is he from? Rachi. Do you know any other cricketer from Rachi? No, I am sure you do not know. Even if you do not know, he is not even close to Dhoni by one person. Today, Indian cricket team, think of top 11. At least 5 or 6 of them will be from cities or villages other than Delhi, Bombay, Bangalore and Hyderabad. 20 years back, you think of any cricket team, you think of any cricket team, either it's Delhi, Bombay, Bangalore or Hyderabad, depending on some change. But now, those days are gone. Some poor fellow from some far off village replacing a strong person from Bombay competing and getting into India cricket team. Everybody talks about the contribution of Saurabh Banguri or MS Dhoni for renaissance of this Indian cricket over the last Yes, we, we won the World Cup in 83, but that's what, that was a one-off kind of scenario. But our ascent to the level of world beaters is basically for the last 20, 25 years. And how could it happen? Because this huge change in shift. Today, anybody from anywhere in India, irrespective of religion, caste, creed, etc. He can easily dream about joining the Indian cricket team. Come to education system. Can you even think by the farthest of imagination that 
this can happen in academic system. A person, a student from unknown village, unknown institute, tier 2, tier 8 institute, becoming the director of one of the top 10 NIRF ranked institutes. This is what I mean by ecosystem. Unless, unless we change that ecosystem, we will not only remain at the same level, we keep on moving backwards in terms of technical education system. We have to learn from, I am giving an example for cricket, we have to learn from cricket that that ecosystem has to be developed, that ecosystem has to be developed, which it is impossible to even comprehend that outside these five IITs or a few other institutes, nowhere in India there exists a competent student. This is just not possible. So, when we choose the right person for the right position at the topmost institute or even a faculty member or even a faculty member, only criteria should be how good he is, how competent he is. This is what I mean by ecosystem. Before deliberation on this further, I give you another example. How many of you follow soccer? Nobody? Do you follow English Premier League? What are the students? Yesterday I also, I had gone to bed 3 o'clock at night. Uh, because of that Arsenal match. In English Premier League, who are the top two teams competing with each other? Man City and Liverpool. Man City and Liverpool. Who are the top two strikers in Liverpool? Mo Salah and Sadio Mane. Sadio Mane and Mo Salah. Mo Salah is from Egypt and Sadio Mane is from Senegal and now they are in the top position in Liverpool taking Liverpool for EPL championship. We have reasons to believe that gone by the gone by what we see in India, Senegal and Egypt also these soccer players could get any support. It's very difficult to believe. But they have reached that level. This message is for the students. Yes, we need an ecosystem. But even if we cannot get the ecosystem, we can reach to that level by our own. We need not have to be from Germany, Brazil, Argentina to be the prize catch of Liverpool. Even Senegal is good enough. So of course the academic administrators for them my message is think of this ecosystem. For the individual students think of these examples. Even if even if you are not getting any help, but still you have within you to rise to that, to that level. So what automatically follows? Automatically you have to follow. First thing is you have to dream big. Sapna dekhna chahiye. Somehow I find that is missing in today's uh, fraternity. We have to dream big. Have confidence on your ability. Remember, you have taken, joined a BTEC uh, uh, course, maybe in computer science. You have taken the course on 
on your own. Nobody has forced you, I don't know, about parents or whatever. So if you join the course, you must have the ability to perform at the topmost, topmost level. And there comes a huge, huge problem. What is the problem? What is that level? It is very common today, if you go to Facebook, some girl at the at class 9 has got 19 maths. Her parents put the certificate in their Facebook. Somebody has sung a song. Facebook ke hai. So, 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 so what, what is the level? What is the level you want to achieve? And everything is dictated by the media. Dictated to the extent, dictated to the extent, when I will pay which date I respect my mother, that is also governed by social media. The day when I will send a gift, I don't know which mother is expecting a gift from, from her um, the son or daughter, which day that gift has to be given, that is also dictated by the social media. And we are following that. We are following that. So this is where, what kind of courses we take, whether we need one teacher or two teachers, who is teaching us? Some Bollywood superstar. I have nothing against film stars. But for somebody who does not have any background, at least so far as my knowledge, in academic domain, he becomes an icon for marketing academic uh, courses and products and society grabs that advertisement in both hands where are we living where are we living think twice that uh, uh, when you in a competitive market yes selling a soap is one thing but selling a course is a different thing altogether because that changes your entire career path. So, you have to be very, very careful about it. Are you and your parents, entire fraternity, are we so dumb that we cannot make a choice and get swayed by these kind of completely advertisement driven, uh, driven media driven who are only for making profits, who are only for making profits. In, uh, we see so many advertisements nowadays that has gone, how to change the color of your screen from black to white, how to change the color of hair, but you won't see any advertisement, how to eradicate malnutrition. Because, Again, market. There are no takers for that. So, gradually, I'm trying to create this uh, ambience to make you feel the society where you, where we all live in. We have no other choice. We have to accept it. But at the same time, we must analyze very critically what we are accepting. And what we what steps we we follow. Then we have to understand. Okay, I dream big, but then what are the courses I study? What are the subjects I study? In the meantime, medium of instruction becomes so important that I have seen. In remote villages, some girls studying history in English media, 
she feels that is an English medium textbook. Idea is when you are studying a subject, your primary objective is to learn the subject, whatever be the language. You ask any computer science student, what subjects you have read, I am sure at least 60% will say Python, Java. Are Baba, these are languages, these are not subjects. As if Python is the only way to take you to salvation. Without even thinking that tomorrow Python may be obsolete. Tomorrow Python may be obsolete. Today you have to learn the ability so that you can learn. Remember, in our days, 30, 40 years back, it was difficult to get a job. But once you get a job, it was more difficult to lose the job. Today, it's easy to get a job. It's easier to lose the job. In a, in a fast changing technology, we are in the field of full disruptive technology. Tomorrow or maybe within five years, electric vehicles are coming. Can, we, can you imagine what will happen to the mechanics? What will happen to the engineers who do not know anything about electric vehicles? So unless they have learned the art of learning new, they are simply out of business. No way to survive. No way to survive. So, for the students again, my first suggestion is, whatever you do, never, never ignore mathematics. Whatever way music evolves, importance of classical music remains at the same stage. Uh, we have in Jadapur University we have seen many students from Durgapur, Bakura region, both English medium, Bengali medium, in fact Bidhan, uh, days, Bakura Jilla School. We used to see some students forget about English. They cannot speak in Bengali also because they can speak they speak in Bakura language. But they know maths. And I have, uh, once I still remember, one, once Google came, they have recruited one student from Bakura. Google means 50 lakh package. And then they come and meet senior people like us, say that, sir, we just cannot afford to lose this student. Only thing is, please help him to improve his English and communication skill. But he got the job. So this is what I, uh, I try to emphasize again and again. You have to dream big. Don't lose your focus. Maths absolutely of highest level. Similarly, physics, basic sciences. I'm talking about basic sciences. The reason is very simple. If you are doing business, generally you follow the tide, follow the motion. And if you are in research, just move against the tide. You keep on challenging if you keep on challenging everything. Unfortunately, unfortunately, we in this eastern part, we just cannot accept failure. That is the problem. If my son gets 80, in the last exam he got 85, I am so worried that I lose my sleep. Unless we learn how to accept failure and build next step on the basis of that failure, this kind of strength in character cannot move ahead. 
and since I am sure many of the students are basically from computer science, electronics, IT background, couple of things I have to very clearly tell you. For all of you, you have the entire global arena for your activities. It could be job, research, university, whatever. In US and in UK and Western Europe, top two sought after professional courses are law and medicine. Law and medicine. And to study law, you have to understand artificial intelligence. To study medicine, you have to understand hardcore mathematics. Uh, so this is where we are now. One of the most sought after combination of courses, combination of courses of the class two happens to be mathematics, computing and sociology. And here we tell my daughter so you go for sociology. Today, you cannot succeed in sociology unless you are good in maths because you have to work on social networks. You have to work on social networks. One of my, basically my students, present area of research is to study and analyze the propagation of influence in social networks. So what automatically follows? Till I should say 15, 20 years, 15 years back, essentially all computing applications are meant for physical sciences. Why? Because physical sciences are very much formal model driven. What is formal model? Formal model is such a model whose interpretation is independent of the person who is interpreting it. What is a formal model? A model whose interpretation is independent of the person who is interpreting it. When we say Newton's laws of motion, there is no ambiguity. Unless there is somebody called Einstein. Ohm's law, Charles' law, Boyle's law, Kirchhoff's law, all these are very well defined. I have to invert, say matrix. Steps are very well defined. So when I uh, uh, write an algorithm or a program, I did not have to get into the data part unless I am very finicky about my uh, efficiency, etc. etc. These are formal model driven. Now, Think, uh, think of an analogy in social science. In physical science, x greater than y and y greater than z. It means x is greater than z. Whatever be x, y and z. Think of a social science example. x loves y and y loves z. Can you say X loves Z? Can you say no? It may depend on X, Y and Z. It may depend on the time. It may depend on the context. So, for physical science, I will straight on to a conclusion. For social science, you will say give me data, then only I can make a try. And the more the data, the more data I have, the probability of getting correct result is much more. And on top of it, when I write a program for matrix inversion, I guarantee 
that the result is correct. But in social science, I just cannot say that my result is correct. I can only say that it's correct up to 90% level, what is the background, etc. Et Come to medical science. Sir, you have to do something. Should we proceed for some more time? Yes, sir. Oh. So, think of uh, some uh, medical science uh, problem. I have some fever. I go to the doctor. And the doctor says that I give you a paracetamol. In four days, you will be cured. Fine. Then I ask the doctor, Doctor, could you please draw a card showing hour wise how the temperature will fall? That doctor will never entertain me next day. On the other hand, in physical science, I am sending a rocket from here with orbit after three years every nanosecond is planned every nanosecond is planned but in medical science and then another interesting issue is then I ask the doctors doctor how do you know that this will work doctor says that yes we have tested it with one million patients but the same doctors say that no two human bodies are same on one side you are giving your medicine on the basis of empirical results. On the other side, you are contradicting what you are doing. But, of course, genome sequencing is now, uh, we have seen a doctor here, is coming up very fast. So, uh, but one thing is true, that if we get a large volume of data, if we get a large volume of data, probability of getting near correct result is much much more thanks to the huge advancement of computing in terms of hardware software has not gone to that extent not now nobody hardly anybody is except theoretical computer science we know some problems are generally very tough but even then generally we are not that bothered about the size of data, practically infinite. So we can handle infinite data. So the entire concept has gone upside down. Previously, say matrix inversion as I said, we have a model, we have the algorithm and then we come to the solution. Now in social science, biological sciences, we start with the data and then develop the model. Start with the data and then develop the model. And for that reason, if I have a routine for matrix inversion, that will be valid everywhere, every, every place. Whereas in social science, the model which is valid here may not be valid some other place, in some other place, because the context is different. This is what is articulated as data science. And it's because of its huge potential that data science is definitely one of the top most uh, sought after uh, topics. Now, then I can take another 10 minutes. Okay. Then Everybody talks about artificial intelligence. Sometimes uh, uh, I feel that I have lost all my intelligence. The way that people keep on keep on talking about artificial intelligence. What is artificial intelligence? I need to demystify some of these two words. Mainly the students and the parents. Do you know what is it? Natural intelligence. Do you know what is intelligence? 
I remember when I was in Suratkal, I don't know how many of you have seen Suratkal. It's right on the sea beach. They have a private sea beach, Arabian Sea. And I always used to have parties, all those Kishore songs and all those. So there, uh, that first day when the parents and the kids come, we were having some kind of party on the sea beach. And then one mother came with her daughter, got enrolled in this computer science. And she came to me, sir, we have a problem. I said, what? Sir, your computer science course does not have any programming paper. Yes. We did not have any paper on programming. Then she asked, then how will she learn C++, Java and all those? Then I told, asked the daughter, Tum uh, sir? She said, from Kerala, Malay. I asked her, can you speak Malayalam? She said, yes. So who, who taught you Malayalam? Big silence. Then I told her, anything you learn from classroom, you may forget. Anything you learn from the environment, you will never forget. Learn on your own from the environment. You will never forget. A computer science student cannot afford to forget C++, Java and Python. That's why we will not teach them in the class. You have to learn them from the environment. We will teach C++, ISCO, Mechanical, Civil. The other departments for whom computer science is not the uh, primary subject. So, I repeat, if whatever you learn in the classroom, whosoever is the teacher, you have a tendency to forget. But think yourself, whatever you learn yourself from the environment, you will never forget. And computer science student cannot afford to forget these programming languages. That's why we will not teach them, teach that for computer science students as for the, within the curriculum. Of course, there will be lots of exercises, uh, lots of it for which you need to uh, learn. To so learn from wherever you can. Uh, uh, if you see the syllabus of Imperial College, London, the first semester course is theory of programming languages. They do not teach programming language. They cover theory of programming languages. So languages you have to learn on your own. It's for your own requirement you have to learn. Otherwise you cannot survive. Now coming back to AI. A human being by nature is intelligent. Otherwise how a baby Learn to stand on two feet. Who has taught her to stand up? You see, young, uh, uh, young is babies, the kind of uh, intelligence they have. Unfortunately, by the time that baby or kid comes to class 9 and 10, we make sure that she loses all her intelligence, become completely dumb, Otherwise, she cannot do the top three in the class. Because whatever question you have, whatever question you have, kitab mein jo likha hai, oi likha padega. Otherwise, you will get a big zero. If you try to apply your thought process, challenge whatever is going to be there, the teacher is unlikely to even see whatever you have written. This is our Unfortunately, this is our system. This is our system. But again, I have given you the example of Mosala and I can give you many other examples. Whatever is the system, whatever is the system, you have that Takatona Chaye, 
that I will rise to the top from that system. And how can you do that? First thing is, you set a target, which is, which you feel is achievable. If you play cricket, cricket, what, who is your target? Can you become a Virat Kohli? Cricket, he is too big. Can you become a Surya Kumar Jada? Slightly lower. But you see where you can go. You study. You see that in this exam, I have to get, say, 19 max. If you fail for whatever reason, not to not to achieve your target from the core of your heart you have to believe that you are the only person who is responsible for that that is very very important never say that syllabus mein nahi tha teacher padhaya nahi hai that student to क्वेश्चन पहले से लीक हुआ हो गया था नेवर यू थॉट यू कुड डू इट इफ यू कैन नॉट डू इट यस यू आर द ओनली पर्सन हु इज रेस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर दैट एंड वन एग्जाम इज नॉट द एंड ऑफ योर लाइफ नथिंग हैपन्स इफ यू डोंट परफॉर्म वेरी वेल इन वन और टू एग्जाम्स सो दिस इज a huge lesson i would impress upon you to to ponder about i have to round up unless i uh, uh, impress upon you this ai and ml i i give you another example just to demystify these words already data science i have explained suppose you want to क्रॉस द रोड कैसे करना है लुक एट राइट लुक एट लेफ्ट लुक एट राइट एंड देन गो ठीक है बट इफ इट्स वन वे रोड समथिंग डिफरेंट इफ सम इमरजेंसी व्हीकल इज कमिंग समथिंग इज डिफरेंट नाउ सपोज एज इट इज हैपनिंग इट्स वेरी कॉमन इन चाइना नाउ दैट Uh, you design a robot who will cross the road now computer cannot do anything which a human being cannot do whatever be the computer may be because the computer is programmed by the human being so we have to program the computer accordingly do this do that all possibilities all possibilities and feed it in terms of algorithms data and all those so it's something like say that suppose i want to solve a problem you give one young kid he may solve the problem just like this without knowing kaise kiya on the other hand for old people they will try to figure out whether i have done it earlier similar to that so huge repository of you know data from there they solve the problem so here since i have to train the robot in such a way this entire so which is not intelligent by nature we make him intelligent through this but that intelligence will be restricted to the intelligence of the programmer who has programmed it as for example same robot which is working very fine take it to us it will fail first instant because the traffic is moving towards right it will not work or or you have to keep some provision so that they change the mode just like you know voltage and all those they change the mode so and these intelligence you are embedding into a machine you are 
embedding into a machine. So that leads to machine intelligence studies. But these are very big topics. I'm just trying to uh, say just one or two words, uh, mainly for the students, uh, to the uh, machine uh, uh, learning. And then what do you do with this? Now suppose you create a robot which will bring the groceries from supermarket. In my refrigerator, in my refrigerator, I have a sensor that if my milk is out of stock, automatically the shop I purchase from, Safeway, that will carry a signal that this is out of stock. Robo will pick up that from that place and then in any case the robo has been fed how to come to my house. So then and it's very much in practice. It's not that it's a, how come driverless cars are moving. This is the uh, vision. So they come uh, like this. <coughs> These are the sensors and this is internet of things. There are so many things which are connected through internet, powered by artificial intelligence, machine learning, with data science in the in the uh, in, in, in the back, and this is the future, at least for next ten years, at least for next ten years. But that does not mean the students, you start learning artificial intelligence in secondary architect program. To learn anything, you have to have some basic, basic requirements. And I get back to, again, whatever be your branch, whatever be your branch, don't ignore mathematics, data structures and algorithms, graph theory combinatorics, database. For eternity, I have been saying, even computer science students, I don't know the syllabus here right now, computer science students, they were forced to do drawing, workshop, because mechanical used to do. But mechanical students were not told to study data structures compulsory. So curriculum has to be changed accordingly, completely changed accordingly and bottom line, what is the bottom line? At the end of the day, industry or society, they need problem solvers. Problem Discipline wise nahi hota Problem comes by requirement and the requirement is always interdisciplinary. If you need some problem to be solved for a patient, you will need sensor, you will need computing, you will need everything. So this concept of discipline, department, all these, they have to be within a very soft boundary, very soft boundary. Lots of interdisciplinarity, ona chahiye, problem driven, robotics, very similarly, uh, nowadays even pollution and environment and all those. So, in this way we have to think and finally, before I conclude, just one or two points. I don't know. <coughs> Unfortunately, our education system has only one problem. We talk of what? Best practices. Best practices, kaha se milega? Some university which is best in our country, no institute is within 
top 150 in the world. No institute is within top 150 in the world, probably 200. Within 200 only uh, IIC Bangalore, I think around 160 and IIT Bombay has come to once. Practically within 200, kuch nahi hai. Anyway, Singapore is within top 20. Zimwa, Kaist, Hong Kong, they all are within top 30, 40. How many of you have visited one institute within top 100 in the world? Can you raise your hand? Now, up to the head, which institute? Huh? Stanford. Carpet. Which place? California, everybody knows. Which place is California? Palo Alto. Have you seen their charts? Have you seen their playground? Now, anybody can go to Baito. Just to see the playground or charts, it's what visiting Stanford. But nobody goes to Stanford to see the charts. Now I can, but they have created the ambience. This is what I am leading to. This auditorium is definitely what visited. I have been to many places, many institutes, many big places, mainly in the east, in eastern region. It is very difficult to see appropriate infrastructure which is required. Just that ground in front of the Stanford, that is required. But nobody goes there for that. Similarly, I am so happy to see that B.C. Roy Institute has such an amazing place. So, you have to, the students, faculty, you have to take it forward. I remember when I was the director of NIT Suratkal, uh, Mrs. Sudhamurthy was in the board. Uh, Ministry people in one uh, uh, board meeting, we are giving plan for infrastructure and I have planned for one uh, library. And library complex including student chipkhana, bookstore, big TV screen, etc, etc. Then the ministry representative, he raised an objection. He said that, this kind of structure. I said Stanford University. Then he said, Professor Bhattacharya, you have the Stanford Chalaya. Why can't you come to IIT Madras or Bombay first? Then I told him that in any case they will follow Stanford. So why should I follow this transitive route? I follow direct. So, so this is what Sudhamurti immediately acknowledged what I say. What I, why I am saying this, this kind of, I again say, this kind of arrogance you have to have. Uh, MIT Dean, Professor Ravi Mathur at that time, he was an alumni of IIT uh, He used to make that, uh, that uh, open courseware. So I asked uh, Ravi that everything is available in the way. Then why uh, people come to uh, MIT. He said, Swapan, uh, people go to institute to learn what is taught in the class. People come to MIT to learn what is taught in the environment. Even when you are in the coffee shop, you will be learning something. This is the difference between an average institute and a great institute. And then they also say, that yes, we only do take up that program which we believe we can do best in the world. 
Otherwise, we won't take up that program. We will not take up that program. Just like in India, I don't understand why IITs, they have gone for management courses. They have their technology courses. Forget about IIMs. Hardly any student will go to IIT management. Even uh, so many Narsimunji, uh, there are so many management institutes. They are on top of that. Uh, IIT Kharagpur, previous director, was very close to my, is very close to my younger brother, like Martha Chakravarti. When they had gone for medical school, uske pahele ajar the. So, I am always in favor of saying that if you create a medical school today, it will take at least 30 years to grow. Instead of that, let IIT Delhi seriously collaborate with games and then come up. And this is the major planning problem we had created since independence. Of course, we had huge sort of planning, but uh, recently I had written an article and I could see that top 50 universities in the world, they all have multiple disciplines, medical, law, everything is there. Without that you cannot cross it. So today, I will conclude now, uh, people are getting restless. So, uh, but I would always suggest since you have that flexibility, if you want to visit some institute, go to the best institute, go to the best place. Today there is no reason to be bogged down by the geography. If the best person is in Karakpur, go to Karakpur. If the best person is in Bangalore, go to Bangalore. If he is in Singapore, go to Singapore. And don't forget, from Dundapur, going to Singapore is cheaper than going to Bangalore. Cheaper than going, this is the blockage in mindset we have. During, uh, if you see, during my tenure in Suratkal, we had 34 MOUs with foreign universities and uh, institutes like all those. So if you feel that I can be of any help, I am there always, but only one condition, you have to dream big. Nothing less than that. Nothing less than that. And finally, I will conclude, and this is for the students mainly. Uh, this is always uh, my concluding. I uh, have many signature statements like this to the students, to the faculty, to everybody. I can say that do what you enjoy. Enjoy what you do. You cannot enjoy your profession unless you enjoy studies. Oh, sorry, unless you enjoy life. So, life is much bigger than uh, just profession. And if any one of you has passion, don't ignore that passion. If you are very passionate about classical music. Tomorrow you have an exam. I'm sure if you listen to classical music whole night before the exam day, you will do much better in the exam than studying that paper the entire day, entire night. Have believe in that. Similarly, as I said, each one of you must have one area where you are so passionate that you do it because you love it. No strings attached. No questions asked. You can go to any extent to pursue it just because you love it. That may not be studies, maybe anything, maybe painting, writing, photography. Remember, if you follow this practice, that will be reflected equally well in your profession also because that will be the basic character of you as a professional 
And finally, at the end, you cannot expect life. You can expect the world always as per your liking. Who needs it? But come what may, never lose your smile. Come what may, never lose your smile. अगर गाली भी देना है मुस्कुरा दे लो। Just think if somebody is shouting at you and you are replying in a smiling face, what kind of strength in character that requires? Nothing that that can help me. Thank you. for your encouraging words. We believe your informative deliberation will forever be locked in the memories of our budding engineers and will keep on encouraging them till time without end. May I now request our dear students to kindly get back to their respective departments very silently as the session with our student ends here. May I also request our esteemed members to kindly be seated as Dr. Bhattacharya will start with a long-awaited interactive session with us shortly. Students, very silently, I request all of you all to please get back to your departments. Hello, sir, myself, Sujit Bhattacharya, Assistant Professor from Mechanical Engineering Department. In our department, we have newly introduced some subjects on machine learning and data sciences. I also teach mechatronics here. Now my question is, uh, being from mechanical engineering background for the students, what should I tell the students or to motivate them or what should be the motivation for the students to carry on these subjects being from mechanical engineering background? Thank you, sir. Uh, very good question. What is your role model? as mechanical engineering department. Sir, I am assistant professor. I know. Yeah. Uh, uh, what is the mechanical engineering department of which university you consider to be what following? Sir, uh, Macaut. Macaut is not a uh, What's the role model? Some institute. Koi data hai, koi institute. No, sir. Have you, have you visited Bombay any time? No, sir. I have not got that opportunity to visit. Opportunity kya hai? Opportunity is not in the South Africa. Opportunity is not in the South Africa. For the South Africa, if somebody scores, opponent does not give them the opportunity. They have to create the opportunities. So, outside Calcutta, what other places you have visited? Have you visited Jadavpur University? Yes, sir. Have you visited mechanical department at Jadavpur University? I have visited production engineering department. Right. Do you know anybody there? 
Bijang Gorda Jadi Duduk dong di kanda Yes Suruh so, kau pun
আমি একদম খোলা গলায় বলি কথা আমার অনুপমের সাথে এ ব্যাপারে ঝগড়া হবে
क्वालिटी मैनेजमेंट तो होते हैं और धाबी का देवांती से शेम के हमारे लिए आम तो ही अभी नंदन एवं सुबह से जाना ही आज के लिए अनुष्ठान की उन्हीं पुरी चला पुरी चला कर ले लोग शेजन ने आमला सवाई कोई भी तो वो होना के हमारे लिए आम तो ही धन्नो बाल आज के अनुष्ठान एक नहीं शेष हो आशा कोई ये � सवाई के सुबह चल जानी है वो 